99 Hustles. Hustles. 99 Hustles. 99 Hustles. Welcome to the 99 Hustles podcast. I'm your host, Nick Garter. And I'm your co-host, International Fees. And today we're joined by another incredible guest. Uh, we're joined by no other than Trevin Peterson. Uh, Trevin, how's it going today, man? I'm doing great. I appreciate the opportunity to be with you guys and look forward to being on the podcast. Absolutely, Tevin. We appreciate you taking the time to be here with us. Uh, Tevin is a true testament of the digital rags to riches story. Uh, at the age of 23, Tevin uh, went from a college dropout who quit his, his nine to five, tried multiple MLMs programs uh, before, any, before finding success in Amazon FBA. Uh, at the age of 25, Tevin now is a seven figure Amazon FBA seller who owns AMZ Champion, where he mentors those interested in getting into the Amazon FBA space. Tevin, let's take it to the genesis of all this. And uh, how did you come to the decision to that, you know, that college wasn't the route for you anymore? So first and foremost, I don't want to correct you. It's Trevin. Tevin. Trevin. Uh, so uh, my I name is different. A lot of people don't. I've never heard of my name. Um, but yeah, Trevin, Kevin, Trevor, I, I get it all. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, so you're, 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 we're preaching to the choir here. My name is Benil and you can only imagine what the, uh, what iterations I get. Um, so, so I, for someone who has a different name, I apologize. I apologize. No, no, no worries at all. So, so yeah, it all started back when I was 20 years old and I had the idea to, to get married. And at the time I was like, let's do this. I'm ready. I'm going to school. I thought I had life figured out. Uh, my wife was um, on the college's dance team. She had a four ride scholarship going to school full time. So she didn't really have um, any work going. And I was going to school at the time thinking that was the route uh, to go. That's just how I was raised is, hey, go to school, get your degree, then get a nine to five job and have a secure life. Basically, long story short, um, I hated every second of it. And I was just trying to figure out different things that would potentially replace my income um, because we were struggling. We were financially broke um, as college students being 20, 21 years old, uh, not really knowing what to do with my life. And so that's when it led me down the rabbit hole of make money online, started doing Shopify dropshipping, uh, like you mentioned, I did an MLM. Um, I did all sorts of crazy stuff to get to where I'm at. And then it finally eventually led to Amazon FBA. And within six months of starting my Amazon business, things just really took off. And from there, um, I mean, the rest is history. So um, it, it's just been kind of a progression, a lot of hard work, lots of different sacrifices that I've made to get to where I'm at. But that's kind of how everything started. It was being a broke college student, not really knowing what I wanted so, to do. So, so, so Trevin, um, prior to that, prior to, um, your experience as a college student, did you have any type of entrepreneurial endeavors, you know, like, did you, you know, were you shoveling snow for your neighbors or, or, or <laughs> were you, you eliminated? Know, what, what was the turning point or was it like a, a certain book or something that you read that kind of opened up your mind? No, honestly, that's a really good question because as a kid, I had a lawn mowing business. I had a poop cleaning business. I was the kid that was iron, ironing my money because I was like, oh, this is it's just nice and flat. <laughs> I, I always had the passion to, um, to, to make money was kind yeah, of yeah. my main drive because my parents, um, it's kind of funny story. And I never let my parents uh, down. <laughs> I, I always bring this story up but I wanted to get uh, the iPhone when it first came out. And my parents were like, no, no, I'm not going to get that for you. You're too young. I think I was like in like eighth grade. And I was like, well, I'm going to go make some money and I'm going to buy it myself. And so I go out there and I hustle and I, I just start putting in the work and I start saving enough money. I go and buy the iPhone. And then my dad's like, this is the coolest thing. I'm going to buy me one. I'm going to buy mom one. I'm going to buy <laughs> another one. Like, what the heck? You, you just told me that, I, that you're not going to buy me one, but then I go and hustle and get one. And then you go and buy the entire family one. And, I, and so um, it's just kind of a funny story. That's just kind of my personality is when I want something, I just go out and, and go and get it. No, that's, that's a, uh... That's very fun. I'm assuming, were you the oldest in your family? I, I'm actually the third. So I have an the older brother third. and then I have uh, a sister and then a younger brother. So family of four. 
now does that entrepreneurial spirit like run deep in your family or were you the kind of the one that stuck out in, in everyone? I would say definitely, definitely. I'm the one that kind of stuck out. Um, my dad, he actually is an entrepreneur himself. Um, he owns a construction business. And so he's been doing construction his entire life. And, um, he actually started with, with real estate and started flipping homes. And then it led him down, um, remodel contracting. I actually worked with him and hated every second of it. Um, I, was, I do I love my dad. Ask, I appreciate but... my dad. Um, <laughs> but it was, it's not the industry that I prefer. Um, mm -hmm. and it's brutal. And so my dad does have that entrepreneurial mindset. And he'll actually say growing up, um, out of all the kids, I was the one that wanted to stay up late at night talking about stocks, talking about business, talking about different things where the other kids didn't really care. Um, and now to where we're at, we're all um, old. My, my older siblings have kids. They're married. Um, I would definitely say I'm the most entrepreneurial mindset. My younger brother is kind of following in my footsteps. Okay. Um, but I would say I guess I could be an outlier of the family. Now, what's that like seeing, you know, someone in your family who probably when you first said, hey, I'm dropping out of school, I'm going to go and like be a digital entrepreneur. Like, what was that conversation like with your family? I'm sure it was an interesting one. Yeah. So my mom didn't really support it much mm -hmm. at all. My dad was very understanding and it was kind of like... It, it, it was totally a blessing to be able to work with my dad, but it kind of, I, I would say it didn't do super good on our relationship. Mm. And I actually ended up uh, quitting working with him to pursue my, my passion and, and my Amazon business and the digital kind right. of journey. And he was super understanding with that. And he has respected me from day one. And I can't thank him enough for understanding that because, I mean, he gave me the opportunity to work with him. Right. And I was, I was very appreciative of that, but then it came to a point where it was like, you know what, it's not good for me. It's not good for right. us. I prefer something different. And so he was super understanding. My mom at first was a little hesitant, but right. as the time went on, she was like, Oh, this actually works and like good for you. And now she's like, like, about it. like she, she's my biggest friend, supporter. Like, oh, my son is a, is a big deal <laughs> online. He's, you know, he, he's doing so well for himself. Um, no, but I think, um, it's understandable why, why, you know, parents or, or your mom in this case would be a little, um, you know, hesitant to support such an idea that's not normal, right? Like every, our parents were told like your children need to go to school. They, they need to do you know X, Y, and Z, or they won't be successful. So it, it kind of like shakes up the whole, um, Paradigm. You know, foundation of them. Yeah, exactly. So it's kind of like, Hey mom, I know I'm supposed to go to school and like, do you know x y and z but i think i'm actually going to go ahead and do this really crazy thing that i can't really explain to you <laughs> in a way that you understand but just know i'm okay like the lights are being paid like i'm good like, i don't need money i don't need help um but i guess talk us through like that that process of you know you're in school you're married at this point but now you're starting your priorities are a little different in terms of not focusing strictly on school but like finance is, is something that's really important to you like what was that? Was that a conversation you had with your wife that got you into, you know, being, I guess, okay with the idea of trying something different? Yeah, honestly, that's a really good question because that is when my mind really opened to, hey, I've got to figure something out. Um, I'm this 20 year old kid. I can't live off of my parents. I'm not going to ask my wife's parents for money. Like, I've got to make something work. And I'm the one that, had the idea of let's get married. And so mm. as soon as that happened, I was like, I've got to make it work. Mm. And that's just when that passion really came out of me. I've always had it, but that's when I was like, I've got to just go, go, go and become financially free, be able to support um, my, my wife. And I was also a kid. I was like, man, what if we have a baby? Like right. I'm 20 years old. Yeah. Like that would throw my life for a loop. Thankfully we don't have any kids, but at the time I was like, man, if I had a kid, like there's no way I could support my family yeah, yeah, and, right. and be able to provide. And so that was kind of my long-term goal. And that's what I was thinking is, Hey, I've got to be, be able to provide for my family. And if a kid happens, then I've got to be able to provide for the kid as well. 
Mm. So that was kind of what stemmed everything. And that's where my motivation became uh, that came from. And that's my why is my family. Yeah. Mm. Life, life made me, life made you a hustler. Yes. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? I had to, I had to do what I had, what I had to do. Um, that story is respectable, man. I mean, and, but the thing is, it's also scary, right? Like, so if you, if you have it, when you increase like your responsibilities and you're also like learning something new, like Amazon FBA, that can be, that can also be scary. Can, can, can you talk to us a little bit about that early, you know, your early stabs at Amazon FBA, um, early failures and like, you know, dealing with that while also yeah. thinking about your family? And, and just to start, like, how did you come across Amazon FBA? Like, yeah. What, yeah. what got you there? So the failures and that scariness that comes along with making the jump of becoming an entrepreneur. Um, I mean, I still remember days where I actually talked about this on a, on a live call just a few days ago that I remember vividly in my room talking with my wife, like, hey, like, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I'm cut out for this. Like I had a really bad day. I had a bad week. And I'm like, man, is this actually going to work? Did I make the wrong decision? And that everybody has those thoughts. And that's just the moments where you've got to just push forward, keep moving and not sit still. Because I feel like when I'm in those kind of ruts and if I just sit there and kind of think about it, that's when my mind just goes even crazier. So my advice, if you have those experiences, hey, pick yourself up, get your feet moving and, and just keep moving forward. So mm. um, it, it's scary to be an entrepreneur. Um, you're going to have failures. You're going to have ups and downs. And uh, to touch on the question that you just asked of how did I learn about Amazon yeah, FBA? Yeah. I was actually in a network marketing company. Okay. And that was another huge uh, kind of Learning. point in my life that mm. changed my mindset. I know MLMs, network marketing companies have a really bad black eye. And totally understand. Mm -hmm. um, but it was a really good experience for me because it allowed me to meet other people that were like-minded that had similar mindsets. And so I was actually talking to a buddy of mine, telling him, Hey, like this network marketing and, and you should join and all this. And he's like, well, I'm, I'm doing a thing called Amazon FBA. And I was like, Oh, tell me more. <laughs> and it ended up me pitching him led to him pitching me about Amazon. And within wow. a few weeks, I just was sold and I jumped into it. And basically from there, I, I never looked back and I was like, Amazon is going to basically change my life because I already had experience with Shopify dropshipping. Um, I know that you, you have some experience with that, but mm -hmm. I started with that and didn't see a ton of success, but I understood the concept. Mm. Um, and, and I saw the power because I mean, I, I was getting orders. I wasn't crazy profitable. Mm -hmm. And I, Amazon FBA basically solved all the issues that drop shipping has with long ship times. Um, basically nobody knows you exist. Um, you have to run a lot of Facebook ads, a lot of traffic to your store and Amazon solves all those issues that I was having. And so when you started explaining it to me, I was like, dude, this is, this is going to change what, my life. What, and, what, what do you mean? Amazon, what do you mean? Amazon solves those issues. So, so for those that don't know what Amazon FBA is, obviously we know what Amazon is. It's one of the largest marketplaces companies in the world. You can go on Amazon and basically buy whatever you want. So if you ever, ever shopped on Amazon, you have a prime membership, you'll see the prime badge and that allows you to get your products in one to two days. And so FBA um, you've probably heard FBA before. It stands for fulfillment by Amazon. So all of those prime badges um, are basically when you buy a product that has a prime badge, that means Amazon is doing the fulfillment. And so you're basically able to get your products, send it to an Amazon warehouse. And when a customer purchases your product, um, Amazon will then do the fulfillment and send it to the customer. Mm. And so drop shipping you have a long lead time because you're not buying the inventory until you actually get the order. And then you're more than likely drop shipping it from China or from another location that takes a week or even two weeks to get the product. And people right now are trained to get products in one to two days. I mean, there's Walmart plus deliveries that are within hours. Amazon is one to two days shipping. And so people are not as patient with those types of products. And so Amazon solves the logistics in terms mm. of getting the product a lot quicker. And okay. And that's kind of driven by the suppliers, like 
that's where you your role would step yes. in, right? You're the, you're like the supplier. Okay. Um it's interesting, man. The 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 Shopify versus Amazon FBA like like debate or like yeah. what works for this person what doesn't work for this person is always interesting to hear. Um I do hear from FBA sellers similar to what you just said Trevin is that like the actual you don't have to worry about Facebook marketing because the platform at Amazon is where customers are already at you 100%. know percent you, you know so you don't have to worry about driving traffic um can you talk a little bit about you know that first product you know at you're, you're working as a supplier that very first time with Amazon FBA was that first product successful also what was it by the way yeah so so that's a really good point um and that's another kind of problem that was solved once I transitioned to Amazon FBA is nobody knows you exist when it comes to Shopify you have to drive your own traffic where Amazon, it's a massive search engine. So it's kind of like Google, YouTube, people are going with the intent to buy something. And so if you can find products that people are searching for, and then basically get that product manufacturer, improve it and place it on Amazon, you have a really good chance of succeeding because there's already a bunch of organic traffic. In terms of my first product, um, I launched what's called a seatbelt gap filler. Um, it's on Shark Tank. And, oh, wow. um, so I, it's not one of my products. I basically copied their product, but it's the thing that goes in between the center console of your car and your seat to drop, to prevent things from dropping into the black hole in your car. And so it, it's just like a little divider that goes in between the console and your front seat. And I saw it and I was like, man, this looks awesome. Like I want to go for it. So I ended up ordering a hundred units. And within the first week, I sold 90 units without wow. doing a single thing. Wow. But then I got a cease and desist letter from the company saying, hey, you're infringing on my patent and you need to stop selling it. And I was like, oh, shoot, I didn't even know that you couldn't do that. And, and so I just removed, real. I, I removed the box and, <laughs> and I was like, all right, I'm done. But that was a really good experience. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. So, so you, you pretty much hit it out to park your first product, though. But then I, it gets very interesting because the next six products were big, big failures. Uh, okay. Okay. So it started off good. And, and I still consider that kind of a failure because I mean, obviously if there wasn't a patent on it, it would have just blown it out of the park. I mean, I would have, I would be selling, I mean, tens of thousands of dollars every single month still to this day, but um, I was infringing on their patent. And then it led to some other products that, I just didn't really quite understand the full concept and it was just a failure after failure after failure. And then finally, once I had one hit, I mean, it just took off and I'm still selling mm. that to this day. That's amazing. Now, how did you come across? Um, so I, the first product you said was also, was that where you found it on Shark Tank? You saw it there and, or how did that come, come about? Honestly, it was kind of, uh, when it comes to Shopify dropshipping, how I was finding my products is I was just looking on like Alibaba, AliExpress, uh, just going through different sites to find trending products. Um, real quick, Trevin, for those that yeah. don't know, Alibaba and AliExpress are websites that, you know, are marketplaces for Chinese suppliers, uh, suppliers in China that you can purchase, you know, wholesale products for very low and resell in the United States. Yeah, right. so I, I was just going through all those sites, just trying to find different products. And I came across this and I was like, Oh, this is awesome. And then I went to Amazon and really only saw like one person selling it. And obviously mm. the reason the one person is selling it, cause they have a patent. Um, but I was just, mm. I, I had no idea what I was doing at that point. And I was like, Oh, this looks like a massive opportunity and it is. Um, but sadly there's a patent on it. Mm. So is so the then, research. Yeah. 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 So from there you said the next, handful of products that you that you found and, and were able to find suppliers for those didn't work out now was that strictly like they weren't good products was it a, a supply chain issue like what, what were some of like the what are some what are some common issues you have with trying to successfully sell on amazon FBA? yeah so when i first started i just really had no idea what i was doing i just heard about the opportunity and i was just so excited that i didn't really care to do much research and so i just dove into products just with me kind of saying, oh, this looks good. And there's actually software tools that will break down the data and say, hey, this is in demand or hey, this is too competitive or this is good or this is bad. 
And I didn't really know those existed because I was just kind of going off of, Hey, I like this product. Mm. And so the first few products that I, uh, that I failed were completely my fault. Just be out of ignorance. I, I just didn't know the process. I didn't understand what to look for in a product. So like my second product was a cell phone mount holder that goes okay. in your car. So like the Uber drivers that have, um, uh, all the holders to, to hold their phone, I was like, oh, this is an awesome product. Everybody's selling it and people are making a bunch of money. But the reality is, is the competition is insane. Mm. Yes, people are making a lot of money selling it, but they started selling it years ago and I'm way late to, uh, to the trend. To the party, yeah, yeah. And so I completely, that, that was probably my biggest loss to up to this date was that stupid phone holder. And looking back on it, like what I know now, I would have never touched that in a million years. Mm. And so it was just out of inexperience. Mm -hmm. Okay. So after those six products though, let's talk about that first win. Uh, so what was the, what was the product that then, you know, when you were like, okay, I got this, I know what I'm doing. Um, can you talk a little bit about that experience about when the tide started turning and, you know, you started to make a little bit of money and realize that you had this? Yeah. So I launched, um, a, a product and it just started selling like crazy. And I was like, Oh my gosh, like this is, this is insane. And it almost came to the point where it was surpassing my nine to five income. Are you going to say a, a product? Can you, you want to say the product or you, you um, know that one, I won't because I'm still selling. Yeah, it. I was about to say, yeah, yeah, I think that, I think that when he said his losers, he said the exact product. And then I said the winner, yeah. like, Oh, hey, product. <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah he, he gotta, I, i'm still keep selling some it of the sauce with the, for his mentees yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely <laughs> um but the second product so that one just took off and did extremely well and then that just gave me the motivation and i it provided more cash to go out and launch some more products and so that's when i launched uh the second one that did well i can actually say this one because like an idiot i totally like if if i know what i know now I would still be selling this product to this day, but I had supply chain issues. Um, I had an, an experience on ordering the inventory and just making sure to, to get back in stock on time, but it was called a baby milestone blanket. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you've ever seen it, but it's where you put a baby on a blanket and then there's like uh, one through 12 for the months. And then they take a picture of the baby oh, just to yeah. kind of track like the progression of how the baby grows over I've the first those. 12 months. Yeah. And so I sold that and it did extremely well. Amazing. But like I mentioned, out of inexperience, um, I wasn't able to get back in stock. There was some little strategies and techniques that I didn't understand at the time. And so I basically ended up having to just sell out of the inventory and move on to the next product. Okay. Um, still to this day, that was a big regret of mine. But again, being an entrepreneur, being an, uh, a hustler, you're, you're going to have failures. You're going to have ups and downs. You're going to have mistakes that you're going to make, but you can't really let that drag your feet. You just got to pick yourself back up and move forward. So I just kept launching products after that because I saw that it works. And now to this day, I have uh, over 30 different products um, that I'm selling, which has led to um, 1.5 million this last year on Amazon, and it just continues to grow. So, wow. Um, so I'm sure at a certain point you were, you went from, okay, I think I got it to, okay, I got it. Yep. What was that um, transition like where you felt, you know, I don't know if at any point you felt like maybe imposter syndrome where you're like, I don't really understand why I'm successful at why this. I'm successful, yeah. Yeah, but I, but I am. Was there, what was that moment where things shifted over to, no, I actually, I know what I'm doing. It was honestly, as soon as I understood the, the criteria of what makes a good and bad product, because mm. the, for the first little bit, um, software tools were kind of new. I mean, they were there. Um, they're not near as good as they are now, okay. but these software tools, I didn't understand how to actually use them mm -hmm. and to break down each individual product. Because like I mentioned, Amazon is a search engine. You're not here to invent any product. You're mm -hmm. here to find existing products that have demand that people are wanting to buy. And if you can fill that demand, then that's where you have a lot of success. And so that's basically mm -hmm. kind of the turning point of when I learned like, Hey, this is this is how it's done. And this is where I feel confident in the next product that I'm launching because I know how to say, okay, 
people are searching for this. There's not a lot of competition. I can add value here. I can do this. And if I do that, then I'm going to be able to succeed with it. So um, it took a little bit to kind of fine tune that. Um, but over time, it's just gotten easier and easier. More but for the first little bit, like it, it's tough. Mm. Um, w- one thing I want to put in perspective for our listeners is like, I want to put this per- in perspective, this whole timeline too of your entrepreneurship journey. Because you're, Trevin's a really young guy. Like he, he built <laughs> yeah. a million dollar business at 23. And, you know, you started, you, you started your story just now, like in college. Yep. So when things started clicking for you, what, what, what age was that? Was that like the old age of 21? And <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So I started in 2017, the end of 2017 okay. is when I started selling on Amazon. So if I can do my math, right. I was 20, 20, 21. I was okay. 21 when that's when things started clicking for me. Yeah. Um, and then it just slowly started to grow from there and um, little by little it kind of led to where I'm at now. I'm only 25. So, I mean, I'm not Incredible. super old, um, but at the same time, you're not time, old at all. Trevin. I don't know if you understand that or not. <laughs> yeah. It's incredible <laughs> story. <man. laughs> you tell well, them, you tell <laughs> well, that's the thing is people don't realize how much you can accomplish in such a short amount of time. And, and this is another thing that kind of frustrates me when, when it comes to business owners, entrepreneurship, people want it to happen in two months or three months or six months or a year um, and in my case, it took a couple years, which is not that long to, I guess, be so-called successful, quote unquote. Um, but people just aren't willing to put in that work. So I, I'm sure with you guys, with your podcast, with the different businesses that you guys are involved in, it's not just something that's going to happen overnight. Like it takes time to, to get to that point. But at the same time, time is relatively short um, in the long scheme of things. Right. What a perspective. No, you're right. That's, yeah, that's an amazing yeah, perspective. That's, that's a, they have that's at a, that age, too. Yeah, that's a gem. Yeah. It's like, we look at it like, oh, I got to study this for three months before I, or six months before I can really like start making any money on it. We quickly shy away from it. But you look back, you know, two years ago, you're like, damn, if I just focused for 90 days, like, yeah, life would be so different for me. So Yo, it's, it's important to remember that. And that applies to stocks too. Like we, so uh, Trevin, we're big in, we're, we're, we're heavy in crypto and like, I love crypto, man. <laughs> and it's like people, people like, will just like judge off of like just one week or one yep. month, you know? And then it's just like, bro, like look at the full 12 months, zoom out a little bit. Um, nothing's going to happen immediately. You're not going to wake up and XRP is $20. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. So, oh, wait, you're in, you're in the crypto also, Trevin? I, I am. So Which, uh, I, I got into crypto um, at a really good time. Beginning of 2019 is my first transaction with crypto. Okay. Um, and I Great bought $12,000 of Bitcoin at the time. And just, so yeah, what, 20, so it was $3,600 a coin. Um, <laughs> now, I know there's people that got in when it was like, $6. couple cents, yeah, yeah, $6, yeah, 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 yeah. $10, but I'm over here. I'm like, dude, I got in at a really good time. Obviously looking back in retrospect, it's like, dude, if I would have got in five years earlier, like I'd be a billionaire basically. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but now did you but, hold through 2019 and 20 and then I, I have held all of my crypto. Um, I finally took some profits just, um, just a few months ago. Um, it wasn't like the best time. I think I sold at like 45. Um, and, and I sold only one to go and buy a piece of rental property. And so that was the first time Honestly. that I took a profit to you then go invest into too. another asset. What books, do, what books do you read, man? I, I feel like <laughs> you're, you're literally like following like natural. The, yeah. Like like you're natural. following the blueprint of what they always tell you to do. It's like you invest you take the profit from that investment and you flip it into another investment. So then, you know, it's just like a constant, a constant thing. Like are there books or, or things you listen to that kind of reinforce some of these things or is this kind of just all like within? No. So, I mean, I, I, I have a ton of books. I, I mean, you can see back here on my bookshelf. I see the uh, Tim Ferriss um, right there. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, thinking grow rich Four hour work week, um, hour work crushing week. it by Gary V 10 X rule. Let's I, I mean, the staple books that everybody kind of yeah, reads, yeah. but the main thing, and, and 
just over time listening to podcasts, I, I love, I'm a big podcast listener. I'm an audiobook listener. Um, I, I, I've surrounded myself with like-minded people. And I would say that is the key is just finding people that think similar to you and hearing what they're doing. And it's the same thing as everybody listening. You guys are listening to people that are in the trenches and, and you're trying to seek advice and learn from other people. And if you just learn one thing from one person, I mean, that could be a million dollar idea. That could be a $10,000 idea. That could be a massive change in your life. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of, kind of what led to my kind of mindset changing and just making sure that my money's working for me. And, um, as you guys know, with crypto, it's just super volatile ups and downs, up, ups and downs. And so I was thinking, I was like, well, I'm up a ton. I might as well pull out a little bit. Um, I might regret it. Um, and I know I'm going to regret it, but at the same time, I can't because I then took that money to go put it into a more stable asset like real estate. And so that was kind of my mindset is look. Like I probably won't get as big of a return, but it's a safer, I guess, type investment. Um, and since I'm already up so much, I'll pull out a little bit and throw it into to real estate and then just let the rest of my money just continue to grow. And I don't plan on touching any of my crypto for, I, I mean, for the next couple of years, I just wanted yeah. to stay because I, I see the future of it. Mm -hmm. Um, and I guess to, 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 to Fiza's, to kind of to Fiza's point or his question, like, so your, your, your experience, like, you know, dropping out of school to start a business, um, did do at any point, did you ever feel like you wish you would have went to business school or there are certain principles that might've helped you, you know, or, you know, it's all, it all came so natural. And what I'm even thinking about Trevin is I'm thinking about what I know with Amazon FBA, you have to manage like supply and like cash flow and yep. like making sure you have cash on hand you didn't over order so you don't go in the hole like how was it managing those types of things without any like formal like business training training yeah, yeah. so i um i ended up getting uh, my associate degree so i cranked out school and that's when i so i so i have a little bit of school yeah, not yeah, a yeah, ton yeah yeah, yeah 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 um but for the most part when i was going and i was taking the business classes and, and I'm not here to hate on school. Like I think school is great. And for those that are going that route, I'm not discouraging it. Yeah, yeah. I do discourage it. If you're going into hundred thousand dollars in debt, I, I disagree with that because I, I think you can use that money and, and learn elsewhere or, or go to a community college. That's a little bit cheaper or, or whatever, but I was going to school and, and my business teachers were teaching me things that I'm like, like this isn't applicable. No. To yeah. Like, yeah. Like they're, they're How am I gonna so use this in real life? Yeah. And, and, and what's sad. And I tell this story and it's, it's absolutely hysterical, but my business teacher had a business that failed that, <laughs> that and, and, and so, so he had like, it was a pretty big like <laughs> business that he started and it basically went to the That's pot. Great. Obviously, he has a lot of experience with business, but mm -hmm. his basically resort was, oh, well, this business failed. I'm going to become a business management teacher. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you can't be doing that. <laughs> like, that doesn't, that doesn't make sense. Like, if you're going to teach me sense. business, like, I want to, like, obviously, I have failures and, yeah, and, yeah. and whatnot, but I'm still in the business of the failures that I've had, where he was mm -hmm. completely out of the business because he's like, yeah, I'm out. I'm just going to teach kids. Um, business yeah. management. <laughs> so, so that like, kind of rubbed me the wrong check, way. <laughs> the check to talk about business as opposed to grow it. That's, that's yeah. A, hey, you got to do what you got to do. Um, so with that, do you, um, I know now you have a program where you mentor uh, people to getting into the space. Is that kind of where you see yourself transitioning into, or do you still see like being a seller as still like your primary, uh, your primary, I guess, uh, job or career? Yeah. So my passion is launching Amazon products. Okay. Like I, there's no better feeling than going and finding something from scratch and creating something of my own and launching on Amazon and having it succeed. Um, which then led me to my, my coaching program. And I would say my, my main goal, um, long-term is I want to potentially sell my Amazon businesses for mm. seven, hopefully eight figure exit, um, here in three, five, maybe 10 years, and then just go dump that into crypto real estate, different investments that basically there's, there's my retirement right there. And the coaching, I absolutely love it. Like helping students through the entire process, getting them results, 
Um, it's helping them change their life. Um, just like it's changed my life is also super satisfying. So that I'm going to keep doing for as long as I am selling on Amazon. Um, because if I'm not selling on Amazon, that's the thing with Amazon is there's changes that are happening constantly. And so I would be doing my students a disservice if all of a sudden I wasn't selling on Amazon and I was still trying to coach them. True. It's like, well, I've been out of the business. You'd I be, like your, I be say, like your business professor. I was going to say, like the yeah, business professor. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And, and, and there's a lot of people that do that. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I, again, like I, I'm not going to point fingers at anybody, but if you don't know the ins and outs, and if you're not in the trenches, how in the world are you supposed to help anyone? Like if you're helping people with crypto and you don't trade crypto, like why in the world would I listen to you? <laughs> Agreed. No, that's, that's, a, that's a great point. Um, so, so with that, at, at this point, do you consider yourself happy with the decisions you made, uh, to, to kind of take this as your, as your, uh, you know, chosen path? Honestly, it's been life-changing. Um, I look back and every once in a while, like I'll be in my garage, getting out of my car, going into my house. I'm like, man, I feel like I'm in a dream. Mm -hmm. And the situation that I'm in currently, like I'm 25 years old and I don't have life figured out by all means, but I do feel like I'm in a really good situation and I hate comparing myself to others, but the more that I surround myself with other people, the more I realize how far I've actually come. And so looking back, like I have no regrets, um, absolutely love the life that I've been able to build. Um, never been happier. Um, I would say at the beginning, I had ups and downs and I had struggles, but to be where I'm at now currently, the price that I paid, um, all the hard work, uh, nights of staying up, sweat, blood, and tears definitely has paid off to be where I'm at currently. That's incredible. Amazing. Amazing, Trevin. Um, I'm, I'm inspired, man. So <laughs> this is like, I mean, first off, the business, the business, I'm stuck with that business professor like story. That's the funniest thing. <laughs> entrepreneurs and hustlers just think different than the rest and of you want to hear something stupid is in that class all he did was show shark tank i was like dude i've been <laughs> I, I i've been watching shark tank my whole life like you can watch this at home for free yeah <laughs> like like i've got netflix i've got hulu man i can yeah. i can watch this whenever so yeah. <laughs> anyways i i could talk on for days um, oh one last thing about that topic that guy i put together a business plan and my business plan was my current my main amazon business it's changed a little bit ever since. Yeah. And he gave me a C on my business plan. Oh my and, and I'm over here like, dude, I'm actually implementing the things <laughs> that, that you, that, that you told me. me. Good. And yeah. like I put together this plan and I guarantee in that class, there is not one person, like I can say this very boldly, not one person that took that business plan and it's grown it to a million dollar business. And he mm. gave me a C and that pissed me off. And so I use that as motivation to continue Amazing. to go. So I guess that business management teacher <laughs> has inspired me and lit a fire underneath me to just go forward. So you know incredible. He, he's like the, uh, he's like the varsity coach that didn't pick Michael Jordan. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. 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 Right. <laughs> so, so when, uh, so when Trevin's like, uh, had, has like his, his yacht party, he's going to put that <laughs> business professor and be like, everyone, I want to thank this gentleman right here for, uh, <laughs> for telling me I was a C student <laughs> to help motivate me to be rich and wealthy. And financially um, <laughs> Uh, so Trevin, there's one question we always ask our guests, um, and that is, what is your hustle mantra? Now, your hustle mantra can be like a quote or a phrase or something that you live your life or run your business by. Uh, so if you had to get, come up with your hustle mantra, what would it be? So there's two, and it, they're very simple. If you're not having fun, you're not doing it right. Mm. So my mindset is there is no sense in doing anything if you're not having fun doing it and my nine to five job college, all the things that I was doing at the time that I thought that I should be doing, I wasn't having fun mm. and life sucks if you're not having fun. And so I just keep it simple. Like, look, make everything fun, enjoy it. Because if you don't enjoy it, then like th there's no purpose. Like you've got to enjoy what you do. So that's the first thing. The second thing is uh, a simple quote. All of you guys have heard it whether you think you can or you can't, you're right. Mm. And that's been my mindset from day one is, look, if he can do it, I can do it. If I say that I can't do it, I'm absolutely right. And a lot of people 
as cliche as this sounds, when it comes to business, when it comes to entrepreneurship, the mindset is absolutely key to success because if you're in your mind saying, I can't do this or, oh, this isn't going to work out, then you're absolutely right. And you're going to absolutely flop. So those are my two go-to sayings um, that I live by every single day. Wow. Well, Trevin, um, I met Nick mentioned it a little bit before, but I, I'm truly inspired as well with, with your story and just your conviction on, on how, um, you know, confident you are in your decisions and how, mm -hmm. how, how important it is to, to make things fun and keep things, keep things, um, you know, keep yourself inspired, whether that's through your business professor or just like your, your everyday life. Um, before we wrap up, where can people find you? Where can people find, uh, you know, your, your course and things of that nature? Yeah. So I'm on all social media platforms, TikTok, even, um, people think it's a platform for kids, but I'm on TikTok. I'm on Instagram. I'm on <laughs> YouTube. I don't know if you know this man, but you are technically looked at as a kid for, for <laughs> most people. It's easy there, especially easy there. especially for people that say TikTok is for kids. I, I guess looking. okay. I, I'm, a, I'm a kid. I'll, I'll accept it. I'm I'm a kid on TikTok. But if you just go and search Trevin Peterson. Okay. T-R-E-V-I-N Peterson with an S-O-N. You'll be able to find me anywhere. You can Google me, uh, YouTube me, um, awesome. Instagram at Trevin Peterson, TikTok at Trevin Peterson. Um, if you guys are interested, you guys can reach out, shoot me a DM. Um, I would love to answer any of your guys' questions. Um, so it's super easy to reach out. Just Trevin Peterson. Awesome. Awesome. Well, that's a wrap for this week's episode. Uh, thanks for listening to the 99 Hustle podcast. Uh, be sure to visit 99hustle.com to join the conversation, access the show notes, and discover our amazing bonus content. Please rate, review, and subscribe if you enjoyed this episode. Always remember, there are 99 hustles. All you got to do is choose one. 99 hustles.